Hey, good evening, guys. Welcome to tonight's uh, webinar on publishing for profit in 2014. My name is Natasha Denman, and it's so wonderful to see a lot of you are early birds tonight. Um, there's been heaps of you joined on from about 10 to 15 minutes ago, and more and more are coming through as we're um, as we're introducing this call. So that usually doesn't happen. Everyone comes in for the last minute. Okay, so just before I start rambling on and delivering actually amazing value tonight, just uh, want to make sure you can hear me and see the PowerPoint presentation on the screen. I've got a hello from Pina. Awesome to see you here tonight and I'm glad that you guys have invested this time. Hey Rosie and Darren, uh, thanks for confirming that for me. Perfect. Yep, I got all the confirms. I love the quick interaction and I trust that this is going to be the theme of the night whereby we're going to have lots of questions, answers, comments, um, you know, whatever you need from me, I'm here to answer. There's more and more people coming through. Um, so it seems it's going to be a popular class tonight. I often um, do my best to mix up uh, my uh, calls when it comes to authoring because I want to give you different perspectives on this journey but there's so much involved in publishing a book and uh, I truly believe that there's many tiny little details that we need to address so every time I run a webinar I tend to mix up a little bit um, of the content and just give you a different perspective on it so I trust that that's going to be uh, the case for you tonight and you're going to walk away with some learnings. Uh, I'd love for you to also pay attention with what your um, aha moment for tonight will be. So, you know, when, where did your penny drop for you? And I'd love for you to give you my, me some feedback at the very end of the call. Uh, as well as, you know, what what is it one thing that you're going to action uh, or as a result of what you have listened to tonight? So there is a few names that I don't recognize. So I will properly, properly introduce myself. So those of you that know me well, uh, bear with me so people who don't know me can actually understand where I'm coming from. Hey, I'm just going to say hello to a couple of hellos to Marie Brigitte. Nice to, um, uh, she's writing another booklet. Fantastic. And Kay, um, Kay has said hello and she's uh, coming to us from Tassie. And I think Kay and I are having a little chat uh, over Skype in the next couple of days. Hey, Emmy and Verity. Awesome. All right, guys, let's get into it. And um, oh, wrong button. <laughs> next button. All right. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you as well. Um, great to have you on the webinar. All right, so you guys, as you um, come up with question, queries, comments, uh, do type them up so when I actually take a breath <laughs> and stop, as as you, those of you who know me from webinars, I can talk fast and um, I just want to get as much content out, uh, out there as possible. So do stop me. Um, I will stop and actually check the question box to make sure everything goes answered. I can stick around for an extra five or so minutes uh, at the end of the call, but Verity will be waiting for me at quarter past eight, so I'll have to be with her by that time. Hi, Karina as well. All right, guys. So Natasha Denman is all about the ultimate world. I started out in business in uh, May of 2010. So this year will be my fourth year, my four year anniversary. I can't believe it. Now it's actually getting into serious uh, business. Well, I think you pass your, uh, first of all, you uh, feel, am I going to survive year one? And then you kind of go, well, I'm doing well that I got to year three. And then, um, and then uh, absolutely, like now, when I click over four years, I'll go, well, I'm um, a fair dinkum business owner nowadays. So the very, why I'm so pa passionate about publishing books, and you're probably seeing up here my four different brands that we operate under uh, with my husband. My husband quit his job in um, 13 months ago, and he's been helping me in the business. And it's been really wonderful to enjoy and a wonderful lifestyle with our children. And um and so we're all about the ultimate brands. The only one that sticks out is Ninja Business Chicks. That particular brand is um, a brand that I have with my partner, Donna, who you may see as the presenter tonight because we share a webinar account. But Donna and I wrote the book Ninja Couch Marketing early last year. And, and that brand has done amazing things uh, as a result in all of our businesses. I've got three businesses on my own and so does she. 
And uh, one of the very first thing that uh, literally got my business off the ground was that book that you see at the bottom of the screen, The Seven Ultimate Secrets to Weight Loss. Because as a coach, when I came out of coaching school, they told us we had to niche and um, it took me about really good 13 months to narrow my niche and get a book out. Um, however, it's the best thing that I could have done because it was the turning point, the rebranding of my business from what used to be called PRS coaching to now um, the ultimate weight loss, lose the last 10 kilos was one of the turning points and the seven ultimate secrets was the other because uh, of the fact that uh, all of a sudden people started taking me seriously and I was perceived as a different um you know, business owner with, which had that point of difference of being a published author. I have never been uh, passionate or, or too, um, I guess, um, uh, focused on book sales. The books that I have written have been uh, as a result of wanting to leverage my business through them. So to get my foot in the door in places and also to build my credibility and to become that key person of influence. I've got a stack of um, uh, human behavior uh, experience and I love mindset and, and all the brain work that goes with it. Uh, however, my real passion is behind marketing and sales for businesses, especially startups uh, who struggle to uh, obviously survive their first 12 months and, and beyond that. So they can move towards six figure businesses and more. So as it stands, I have authored four books and uh, the fourth one being Ultimate 48 Hour Author, which is my baby. This year, my whole focus is in on running my Ultimate 48 Hour Author uh, retreats and, um, and they are happening in February, April, July and October. And, um, and February is uh, one person off fully booked whom I spoke to today and I think she may uh, be coming on board, which means that'll be hopefully booked out. And then we're, we're uh, filling up April as we speak. Um, and I just, I just love the changes that I observe in people that I help write books because, uh, the difference in them before they write a book to, to when they do it almost, you know, goes uh, from, I, I remember the first author weekend we ran. It's like on the Friday, everyone's are scared and not sure. And as the weekend progressed that you could see them standing up straight and walking around really uh, proud of themselves and almost a tad cocky, you know, I'm going to be an author and all this. And they're all becoming authors. 10 of them will be launching their books in Doncaster in Melbourne on the 14th of March. So you're all invited to come along if you're a local at from 7 p.m. at the Pancake Parlor in Doncaster. We'll be doing a big book launch for actually 11, potentially 12 books will be up there uh, present and all the authors will be there to have a chat too. So that's the history of where I'm at. My 2014 is all about Ultimate 48 Hour Author and actually sharing the, the tips, skills, structures, step-by-step -step system behind what it takes to write a book because a lot of people, the first response that I get from people is I have no idea where to start. I know a lot of stuff. I know I can teach people. I've been consulting people on this stuff. I just don't know how to structure in a book and then uh, leverage it into uh, my business. So that's some of the things that I will reveal to you. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about in this topic. I could talk about it for a week, but trust that the points that you walk away with today will add on to uh, what you already know and perhaps give you some a different perspective. Cool. All right. So um, just a couple of people have said that they couldn't uh, hear me, but I'm guessing that everyone else is okay. Um, can, um, uh, Darren, can you just tell me if you can hear me? Uh, because you're my little check-in point. <laughs> okay. All good. Okay. Thanks, Rob, as well. All right. Cool. Um, excellent. Thanks uh, a few of you for, for letting me know because sometimes maybe the internet falls at your end, but I'll be aware if my audio drops out for any reason, I'll know that it's at my end because go to webinar lets me know and that way. I'll, um, I'll, I'll know. So thanks, Karen, as well. Perfect, guys. All right, let's get into some of the content. And first of all, we really got to give you some reasons why you want to publish this year and why you would want to publish a book. Uh, because reasons very much come before answers. And that's why 
um, you know, first of all, people need to have the why before they want to learn with the how. And I think I've already touched on this a little bit, but let's just explore it a little bit more. And that's, I've already talked about having the, establishing that credibility and expertise and becoming that go-to expert. But building a book and coming up with the content and organizing it, I am very passionate about people then taking it to that next step. And that is where you start building multiple products at the, at the, off the back end of your book. So some of my clients that I consult with, um, have finished their books and, and they're into publishing now. And this is some people that I work with one on one, not the also weekend ones. And, um, and they go, well, what's the next step? Well, I said that now it's time to turn your book into a program. So let's go in and, uh, construct the manual that people can work through them themselves. And, um, you can actually consult, uh, call, consult them on it that manual can in turn turn into let's say for example i recommend that people write 12 chapter books because 12 chapters uh is a good chunk and it can become a 12 month program a 12 week program a 12 step program it can be converted into 12 ebooks it can be uh delivered in 12 webinars who which can in turn become an e-course um and you can make passive income from that it can be converted into 12 workshops or it can be converted into a retreat um, style delivery of the, the program. Obviously, we're talking about books here that are going to be um, designed uh, in line with what your business expertise is. So most of the people that I help out are people who are coaches, consultants, trainers. And look, I've had the odd people who um, uh, I'm helping out a gym owner. She's coming along to the April weekend. I've helped out a locksmith uh, write his book. So there's been a, a couple of odd, uh, I mean, the locksmith one was really the more, most left field one, but he's enjoyed amazing publicity and um, and just uh, uh amazing result and uh, actually I'm having lunch with him on Thursday because he said to me he's written his second book he just wants me to look over it and just give him some feedback on his sexy titles so um so yeah Maggie's just saying yes uh you can get a copy on the slides and thanks Wendy okay so um books are also fantastic um a low entry point into your sales funnel and um the sales funnel is a very important thing to consider when you're building a business uh, because it is the um, the journey that you will be taking your potential leads and prospects on to get to do the things that um, that you offer. And if they love what you do, they will continuously go filtering down through the sales funnel to the more expensive programs and services that you actually have. So in business, um, and I'm very much going to focus on all, obviously on uh, building your business through your book. So what's very important is like, obviously we need to have different offerings. We need to have the, the cheaper products, the medium le uh, level products, and then the, the high end products where perhaps it's your time one on one, or perhaps you're offering a retreat style, um, uh, uh product. Uh, when someone meets you, generally the the trust they have within you as a business owner is fairly low they don't know for, from a bar of soap and you need to build some um you know a relationship with that person and in order to build that relationship and for them to get value from you they need to get go through different levels um uh, within your sales funnel for what is comfortable for them yes the odd person may jump straight into it and say yep i'm going to do your hind program um and and there's people like that Whereas, uh, whereas most of people are what we call a few time convincers. So they need to see value, see value, see value. Um, they might be observing you from the side on social media. It certainly has happened to me because I often ask my clients, how did you reach the decision to work with me? And they will say, well, I've been watching you, what you post on social media and they've never commented. And then they say, well, I've come to a few of your webinars and I've received this and that. And, and you know, I'm here talking to you like six or eight months later. So, so what happens is sometimes we unconsciously or, um, 
is there a word such as unpurposeful? <laughs> Without purpose, we, we, we're not building a relationship, but we actually are. That's why we always have to be as a business owner aware what perception we're putting out there. And certainly if you guys are all using social media, which I believe that most of you are, because that's how you're on the call tonight, you need to be also very careful of what, what sort of perception you're putting out there. So um, a book is also a great uh, tool to build that trust very quickly. Because there's a perception out there, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you um, you actually uh, are an honest and trustworthy pe person if you're an author. I don't know. Would you guys agree? Because um, it's like car salesmen have um, the perception that they're deceitful. Uh, whereas authors seem like they're gentle kind of people and they, they're the experts and they're very knowledgeable and stuff like that. So I, I think that that in, in fact, that's why I'm saying it builds trust a lot faster in, um, with your target market. And certainly, um, it helps you jumpstart your business because, uh, more people are going, well, I'm working with an author and, and they've written this book and they really know if they've gone as far as publishing a book, then they must really be serious at, um, about what what their business is about. Let me read a couple of um, comments here. Um, yes, Karen has said accidental acquaintances. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes, yeah, I, I get so many people sometimes messaging me that I've never sort of really noticed commenting on my posts. But um, but then we end up doing business together, and that's because of um, of the things that I've been adding value through through the my posts. Let's say. Emmy has said, an author seems real and like they have gone through trouble and effort to communicate their expertise. And yes, publishing a book is not an easy, um, easy thing, especially when you're doing it for the first time. When I was doing it for the first time, I was kind of working out the steps, trial and error on how to go about it. And, um, and that is why obviously I'm passionate in fast, uh, making the process a lot faster for other people, because then I'll, I'll just eliminate everything I did wrong. And I show you the steps of, of what, what to do and what not to do and how to leverage your business. Jalinda has says, yes, credibility allows you to have a background and substance. Yeah. And you have a tangible product. This is why I help, um, uh, speakers, um, coaches, uh, trainers, facilitators uh, get their books out, it is because the service that they provide is so intangible and the book is something that will give them that substance and that it will give them that tangible asset, which once you've done a book, which is, you know what they say, do the worst thing first. And that's why I say to people, just write your book first. Everything else is going to seem uh, quite easy after that. So that's correct, Jolinda. And um, Karen has added into that they have taken the time to give out their information in writing, which can be uh, which can be scrutinised, and absolutely it can be. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, guys. I love that you're inter so interactive tonight. I I like when we we can get like because I believe the value also lies within this um, group that we have on the call tonight because. Um, if we add on a different perspectives onto this, it also helps everyone else in the group. All right, so let's move on to what is self-publishing, okay? So I know I've written a lot on this slide and that's probably uh, not the right thing to do when you're doing PowerPoints, but I really wanted to sort of explain a little bit uh, about it. So self-publishing is when you organize your full process of writing the book and you hire the experts to to help you from the various fields so for example you might hire experts to do illustrations for you you might hire experts to do your editing formatting or you might choose a publishing house whereby they will provide absolutely uh, not absolutely everything but they will provide a package of editing formatting layout your book cover and all of those bits and pieces of course, um, you're, you're deciding what's going to go where and, um, and coordinating the whole process. That certainly was my experience with, um, each of my books. And I believe it's a, it's a wonderful, uh, thing to do for yourself because it makes the process a lot faster. So you can have your book in your hands from about, uh, within about 12 weeks of uh, handing over your manuscript to that publishing house you do have all the rights uh to your book generally what i mean by that is that sometimes and i'll tell you of my experience so you can learn 
I've published my first book internationally and uh, uh, the company, I think, was based, is based in America, although I, don't, I never know where they're coming from when they ring me. Uh, they have a funny accent. And, um, and so when I got my book published through them, I um, asked for my book to, to supply my book on a CD so I could get it printed locally because, um, because I just wanted to see if I could find a cheaper print, a reprint rate because it was costing me $15 per book. Uh, if I was to order a minimum of 100, if I was to order like say one or two books, it would have been about $20 per book. So I, um, so they had submitted my book, but it wasn't in, print ready format so my publisher here in Australia who I've subsequently used and I used for my ultimate 48 hour authors uh publishing because she gives us a special uh special deal for for all the authors for bulk purchasing of book publishing and so what she um what she did for me is actually she took my book off that cd and had to rework it and then we did a did up a new cover bought a new number for it um, and uh, basically she had to redesign uh, the book so I can then print it locally in Australia. And what that meant is I didn't end up having my um, my rights to reprint my book. The other thing that happened with, uh, and this is questions you guys should be asking when you're talking to a publisher with their package, will I have rights to my book? Can I have a copy to go have it printed wherever I want and all that sort of stuff? Look, ne locally, um, and I'll get to those questions um, that have come up now in a second. Locally, you guys are looking um, at, uh, well, I'm, I I reprint for $7 a book per 100 books. So just compare that. It's double the price when I was doing it overseas. I only ever got one lot of reprints and then I just did it and then transferred it over to having it done locally. Another thing that happened which it drives me nuts, it still happens to this day, three years later, uh, two and a half, I think, is they ring me, that this uh, uh, inter uh, international company rings me on average, I would say once a fortnight, regularly, they must have some system that blips up uh, in them, and they try to sell me more marketing for my book. And these marketing deals are tens of thousands of dollars, like, Oh, do you want to go on TV? Do you want to do this? I mean, I, I've stopped answering that calls. I just ignore. I never return any voicemail messages because so many times I have told them I don't need any marketing. My book is doing fantastic. I'm leveraging it in other ways. I'm not interested in book sales. And they still ring me, ring me and ring me. And I don't know how to stop them. I, I think I need to change my number to stop them actually because they just keep uh, you know you gotta love their persistence but it's really getting to a point it's like get the message put a note on my file and stop ringing me so that's something you got to be aware of okay because it can happen and it's just it can be very frustrating so ask those questions of um of people uh, that you potentially may be interviewing in publishing your book um so self-publishing you can print on demand as many or as little copies as you like and you have your full creative power. So if some of you are interested in going through a full publishing house, uh, the process may be stretched out to two or three years. And will you get chosen, first of all? And then they also have a lot of, um, uh, they take on the creative, you know, they have the creative power. They tell you what they would like to see, what they what, what will work, what won't work. And at the end of the day, uh, you need to be prepared uh, to either go with them or uh, completely pull out. There is obviously benefits of um, being published by a uh, traditional publishing house, but it's not going to happen as fast. And if you're writing a book to leverage, in your, to leverage your business, self-publishing is going to be the fastest way you can um, get it done for yourself. So let me go through some comments. Uh, Julie's saying, uh, who do you use? What publisher? Julie, I use Busy Bird Publishing. They're local. They're only around the corner from me. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a, a lady who I met through my BNI group and she's been absolutely amazing and she, uh, does an amazing job and she's now published about 13, 14 books for me. So I continue to use her and we have a fantastic, um, uh, strategic alliance between the two of us in terms of, um, you know, adding the value and, and working really well as a team. Um, Maggie's just asked new number, ISBN. ISBN is your barcode number at the back of the book. 
So um, I was advised by Blaze, my publisher, that um, we need, we're doing the new cover and printing it here in Australia was uh, better that we re, uh, redid the number so that it's registered under this new number here. That's what that's what was I was told we needed to do. Um, Karina says, how do you test the market prior to writing the book? Uh, Karina, I never tested the market before writing my book. I go very much on intuition and some people will probably cringe at that. Uh, but I go uh, with uh, my own, like what is the things that I have overcome that I also know that other people have a challenge with and, and, and I put it out there. I guess if you like to say how, do, how did I test the market prior to writing the book, well, with the ultimate 48-hour author book, um, Obviously, I did a few webinars on publishing to see how many people were interested in it. And then also, you know, when it's 48 hours and it's such a fast turnover, uh, people are out there looking to how to save time and, and money and, and not having to do it all themselves. So um, so I, 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 with my very first one, though, to tell you the truth, it was just I just need to write a book, get all my thoughts, everything that I know down on paper, and whether it's good or not good, it's just, it, it's amazing. I don't think about it very much. I'm very, very impulsive. I make decisions very fast, but I don't change them fast. So one of the success strategies that I've always remembered that rings in my head, uh, I don't know what re book I've read it in, but it's, uh, they said successful people make decisions fast, but change them slow. So they really have to give a decision a good go before you know changing their mind because often success might be just around the corner cool uh yeah sure julie i can do that um intuition is the best barometer Jalinda says and charlotte says i read it from tony robbins there you go and karina says i'm the same all right guys i can't believe how fast time is going tonight all right, tonight I promised obviously on this webinar to talk to you guys about how to plan for your book project easily, who and what you need to consider when you self-publish and uh, how to quit procrastinating over this project and get it done within your set time frame because um, procrastination is huge in, uh, with book writing because it, it is a big project. You know, um, it you have to coordinate a lot of bits and pieces and it's it's just something that um, that you kind of go well. It's one thing sitting there and typing it all out in Word and getting your manuscript ready, but there is so many other things. I know I've put together checklists for prior pre weekend and post forty eight hour author weekend, and there is many different components that have to be considered in order for you to do it the right way. Cool. So let's get into planning. Okay. Very much so, planning needs to occur in a way that you will make a commitment and then you will um, design a timeline for yourself. I would say a, a, a good starting point if you've never written a book is to set yourself a 90-day goal to complete a book in. That is how I did my first book. So I'm kind of going back to my early days because I'm, I'm trying to step into your shoes because you may be doing this for the first time and certainly I think most of you on this call would be doing it for the first time and what I did is I wrote myself a 90-day goal and I said that I wanted to end up with 90 pages in Word. Let me just turn that off. My phone tends to just ring off <laughs> whenever, you know, all the telemarketers. Um, so 90 days and I told myself 90 pages, 90 days. That's not too hard. You can write one page a day. And obviously, I wasn't going to sit down and just write one page. So I said, let's just write, break them down in a couple of uh, writing sessions. And I will write about three to four pages. And I will do that twice a week for two hours each time. And then what I did is I set a uh, appointments in with myself in my diary. So 2 till 4 p.m. on a Monday and say 9 till 11 a.m. on the Thursday. And they were just like appointments as if I was having them with a client. You know, they were an appointment with me to sit down and write. Now, some of you may think, but what if it's not flowing? Well, I would sit there for the whole two hours and just sit and stare at my screen and whatever and just, you know, just really 
see if I could push something out. And if it didn't work, it didn't. I might have written a page or so, but the next time I might write six or seven. So at the end of the, the journey, it really does even out and you'll end up with your 90 pages. 90 pages in Word is about 160 pages when you're actually uh, formatting a standard size book. And that's about 40 to 50,000 words. And that's what you're looking for. Uh, I'm just going on averages and what I recommend for my authors because um, because there is uh, certain certain things that you want to set because sometimes people like to have these specifics and these measurable numbers so then they have something to aim for. And I think that's uh, that's that's good because then you've got a starting point and a finishing point and you're kind of going, okay, well, write as much as you want. In saying that, my publisher has also come back and said to us and the authors that if you have said everything you need to say in 25, 30,000 words, then fair enough. You know, that still qualifies to have your book published and, and, and ready. So try not to uh, repeat yourself too much. Um, and, um, and she gives obviously our authors guidance and she might cut out some bits, bits out of their books. And, you know, certainly when I handed in my ultimate 48 hour author book, I think she cut it down by five or 6,000 words um, because she, she found a little bit of repetition and that's okay because she was there to, to do that for me. So then you, you make that commitment and you, you make that commitment and you stick to it and you sit down and you write it. Obviously before the, the timeline and all that kind of stuff, and we did a call a month ago, I think it was. We did a, a live book unpack. And if you guys don't miss that, you can go on to my YouTube channel just under my name uh, and you can look it up because it is a public recorded video and you can see it there and listen to the unpack. But you do obviously need to unpack your book with your content and all that. And that's what I was doing live on a call with one of them. Uh, a volunteer that I had back then. So you want to unpack your book, you want to set your plan and your timeline, and then you need to get to doing the do. And every week, my weekly go goal on the top of my diary would say, write seven pages of my book. And then when I'd achieve that, I'd just tick it off. I did the book in 80 days. So at the end, I just got impatient. Like, I just want to finish it. And so in 80 days, I had it completed within my 90 day goal. And then the next step was to find who was going to publish it. And that's where I spoke to a few people and I found the package, which was that international package. It was a very good deal at the time. Um, and, um, and I got 80 books with it. By the time I sold the 80 books, that paid off that uh, particular package. They were running some special for International Women's Day and it was like reduced by half price. So, look, I ended up getting a really good deal. Uh, however, I have paid for it now with all the uh, pestering that I get um, from their end. But anyway, uh, Wendy's just saying uh, how many words per page. Oh, I don't know, Wendy, how many words per page, but it's written in 12 font and it was single spaced. So whatever that works out to be. But uh, you're aiming for about three, th two and a half to 3,000 words per chapter if you are um, writing 12 chapters. That, that's, that would be my guidelines for you guys. So any questions around the planning? Um, I've got here, uh, Sarah says, I love planning, but look after, uh, but over, uh, after lack commitment to stick with my plan. Okay. So something that I will always say about this is, um, the biggest commitment that you can make in your life is the commitment you make to yourself. Okay. So you're doing this. For yourself and um and just remember that the hard work in product development and certainly i help lots of people with developing their programs their workshops their webinars uh and and, and the books are the key thing you know it you do the work once and then you benefit from it so many times last year um, we launched licensing of our, we licensed our ultimate weight loss business and our ultimate business edge business so people could replicate and use the systems to help others either in weight loss or product development. And to tell you the truth, we really have not, uh, ever since midway last year, we, we, we didn't do too much marketing around that. However, it's still a product that people approach us and they see the website, they have a chat to us and then they invest in the licensing and it's passive income in that term. And it's really, uh, this is how you go beyond selling your time for money. 
It's when you systemize your packages, your products, your offers, you build an amazing sales funnel so that you have many different income streams rather than just the one. So what I love to see people have in their businesses is somewhere between five to seven or eight different income streams. What are income streams? So I will tell you within our business is um, one-on-one consulting, uh, which at my end is fully booked. Uh, Stuart's taking on, uh, he, he helps people a lot with social media and his business mentoring as well and, and, um, and doing that a more, more, lot more of this year. Then we've got our Ultimate 48 hour also retreats. We've got our Ultimate Weight Loss Licensing, Ultimate Business Edge Licensing. We've got their, uh, our, um, our book, uh, book sales, so product sales, just tangible but manuals and products and things like that. What else? Workshops, our workshops that we run throughout the year. And some other offers that we put out there, um, uh, put out there each week. So we've got seven or eight different, uh, different things where, oh, and our inner circle memberships, because we've got like an inner circle low entry point that, um, that, uh, supplements, say the mentoring people who cannot afford one on one or there's no room. They'll come into our inner circle membership. So that's, that's just an example of the different things that are happening. And this is how you be, go and move beyond six figures in your business is when you have all of those different things set up. And then depending on who you're speaking to, they may fall into being suitable for one of those different uh, offers. But this is all come from as a result of the books, because the books are the thing that starts the whole process. They're kind of at the top or the start of that sales funnel. Um, yes. Yeah, so Karina says, do you type it or dictate it? Well, we, are you, I type my first book, but certainly on the ultimate 48 hour author, we dictate the books and we only allow people who really know their stuff to come away and they speak out their books. And then part of the package is that they get uh, the transcription done and we hire someone to do that. And then it's a little bit of the cleanup process before it goes over across to the publisher. Um, Rosie says, do you include exercises and illustrations, Natasha? Is this, do you mean, Rosie, in the books? Uh, in some of my books, I've had illustrations. In my Ultimate 48 Hour Author, I'll have some pictures and exercises. I may not put lines in there, but I may explain how to do a certain exercise. I'm just assuming that you're asking me about a book, but I would, um, actually say that in the training manuals, that people can develop off the back end of their book, then in those particular manuals, you would actually put um, the um, the actual proper exercises and room where people can actually do their working. So I trust I've answered that question. Cool. All right, let's move on to the next point. So who and what is self-publishing? Okay, so there is um, diff- many different things to consider when you're self-publishing. Okay, so the very first thing which I mentioned before was you need to consider your content, and this is where people really get stuck on. Um, uh, you know, what what am I going to write about? How what does the skeleton of my a book look like? And I often love doing book unpacks with people and just really showing them what that can look like. And once they get a feel for that skeleton, they go. Wow, that, 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 now I can see it all coming together because everything else is just about what we say, chunking it down and going into more detail and adding in the stories and adding in the structure around how you will, um, you will, uh, you will end up unpacking it, writing your chapters. So I'm not going to go into too much, obviously, detail into each of these, but I, I needed, I need to give you awareness around what are the things that you need to consider and the content is the first thing and then how you're going to structure that content within every chapter is is the is the next step for which i have developed the system that that i use to teach people to actually do their chapters so that then when they're dictating as karina said when they're saying out their book um they can do it easily from one page of notes and um deliver it in a uh, organized way okay so then there's the different components and the components, what I mean by the introduction of the book, your afterword, your testimonials or success stories you may want to share there. There's your about the author section and what you write in there. There's your offers. You may like to put some offers and I certainly recommend because you're obviously wanting to leverage your business through your book, you certainly must um, 
have different components, uh, sorry, different offers at the back of the book. Um, so that when people have read the book, if they thought, oh, that was really cool, um, you know, I wonder what, what this person, this author also does, and they flick to the back. We usually, when we finish a book, we cl- keep flicking to see what's on the end of the book. That's where you can have, well, you can take this step or that step. And I normally say to people, have three different offers. You might have something for free. You might have something really low cost. And you may display a opportunity for you to be hired as a speaker. So these are all the things that we teach our authors how to put together so that when people read their books, they also know where and what they can do next. Uh, so the components of that, you might also like to have um, a bonus chapter where it's an interview of one of your clients. Um, I certainly did a bonus chapter chapter in the Ultimate 48 Hour Author book um, by having one of the attendees um, talk about their experience. I um, uh, You can get a preface done. So you could actually get someone who is maybe an expert in your industry or someone that, you know, thinks you're cool, you know, to write a little preface for your book and um, and a dedication. You know, those are different components that make up a a book and, and see that they, they, they end up being on this checklist and people need to consider, well, what do I write in there and what do I write in that section so that it actually looks like a proper book. And the best way to obviously um, work out what you need and what order, just look at other books. Look at other books for ideas. And then um, model that, model books that you like the look of and then get your bits and pieces ready. The publisher we have touched on, so obviously the difference between outsourcing internationally versus um, versus um, locally and, um, and whether you're going to go with a package or whether you're going to go, you're going to hire someone to edit your book, another person to do your design of the book, another person. So, you know, you can do it and split it up all over the place or you can go to a place that does it all. Honestly, I get, obviously our publisher for the Ultimate 48 Hour Author provides a full package of editing, proofing, design, layout, um, bookmarks, hundreds of copies of the books, um, ebook version of the book. So they do about a 10, um, 10 different portions of what makes the book cover, the 3D image of the book, all of that sort of stuff goes through them. So consider whether you want to do separate things, bits and pieces, or just go for one full, um, uh, full package, which uh, which usually is the easier easier way to get it done. Next thing is the sales funnel. Um, you need to consider, well, where does my book sit in the sales funnel and what does my sales funnel look like? So if I'm going to write this book, how is it all going to fit in? What am I? Where am I going to be able to walk in? So you've really got to plan almost the dots uh, between where you are to where you want to be because the purpose for writing your book is to get you to grow a successful business. And I trust that that, that's what it is. If you're expecting uh, to sell millions of books and have a bestseller, look, it can happen. I'm not saying it can't. I'm very much focused. I've never focused on being, you know, sell, 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 just books, books, books. You know, to me, it's a lot better if I use that book as a tool to get my clients to do uh, the other things that that I have on offer because uh, otherwise I would have to sell a thousand books uh, versus just um, having them attend one of my programs or, or taking up whatever it is that we're offering. The uh, next, and let me just, I've got one question. Um, okay, Darren says, what are your thoughts on having the book turned into an audio book as well? Fantastic. I would have your book turned into everything if possible, you know, and have you read it out, you know, read by the author. Totally, because some people are auditory. Other people are visual. Other people like their Kindle. So this is why we have uh, we didn't used to offer the ebook version because it does cost uh, uh, X amount of money to convert uh, a book into an ebook because you've got to buy a separate number uh, for it. And <laughs> he's just said maybe even a movie. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I have someone that's spoken to the other day and he had a book ghost written for him and actually they are making a movie out of that book. So you're not too far off, Darren. Um, but this person was a celebrity in the US. So, um, yeah, so he might be coming along to one of our weekends um, uh, and, um, and, yeah, writing a book. So um, so we'll see how that ha- what, what happens with that. But anyway, so the, the, sales, um, uh, the sales funnel is important. And then the marketing. So how are you going to market 
uh, you're writing this book and it's coming out. So what is going to be your pre-launch strategy? How are you going to launch it? And then how are you going to use your book as a marketing tool? Okay, so these are all things to consider. And definitely where do you want to end up in the future? You know, you may not end up where you want to be instantly as soon as your book comes out, but it does, everything builds on to another thing. So I, I'm very much believer everything is a little stepping stone to the next thing and a little stepping stone to the next thing and another one because um, the more, like nowadays when I actually, because I've done all these steps in the last three and a half years of being up to my fourth book, doing all these programs, and they didn't happen overnight. Everything was one step that I took and one focus that I had on a particular program or a book at a time. But when I turn around nowadays and say I've done four books, I've done five programs, I've got four brands that I operate under, they're going, well, how do you do all that? But it didn't happen overnight. So, But there were the little stepping stones. As, and as you can see, it, not only now that multiple, obviously, authoring gives you even higher, um, higher credibility and going, well, she must be really passionate about what she, she does. And certainly that is the case. But it also is a, um, as a tangible, like Jalinda said earlier, you know, it just uh, gives it substance and, of what I do. And whenever I put my hand up to do speaking somewhere, usually I'll be selected because they are, um, they see of, of what I've done and that I don't mind working hard and, um, and, and helping other people do or achieve what, what their dreams are as well. Okay, so the last thing I can see that the clock is ticking here, I want to make sure I, I get through all the content, is how do you quit procrastinating? And I have always done this in my business without knowing, but I have always um, pre-sold what I have pre before even creating something. So before I put together my licensing for Ultimate Weight Loss, I first sold it then I got the legal work created and then I wrote the manuals. I had some of it written, but I put it together and organized it properly. I had it printed. But the same thing happens with books. Now, I started pre-selling my Ultimate 48-hour author book uh, back when I was in Greece in uh, September. I started pre-selling it and um, I sold a few. The minute you sell a few books, I mean, people knew that it was coming out in February, like mid to late February, it's going to be out. And uh, it's going to the printer, if you want to know, like the final design is coming through and then it's going to print. And it's about actually selling something and build a website. A simple website for a book is not going to cost very much and people can have a PayPal button put on there. You can create a little cheap $5, a 3D image of what your book is going to look like on Fiverr, fiverr.com. And you can tell people this is coming out and what it's going to be about because generally you'll have an idea what your book is going to be about and you can, you know, even if you don't pick the exact title that it's going to be, but obviously you need to make sure it's a sexy title. As I always say, you got to sell people what they want, give them what they need, and then you start pre-selling it. Once you've pre-sold it, there's no way, you, well, uh, unless you're um, a person that always goes back on their word, uh, then there's no way I would ever let anyone down if they've invested in some kind of product or service with me. Because when I make a commitment to others, that's when you really have that, um, you know, you need to do, to be integral and you need to follow through on what you've said you're going to do. So that is how you quit procrastination. You quit procrastination by making a commitment to someone else. You know, another example is uh, we set up workshops and the minute um you know usually you know you put it out there and the minute the first person books in once they're booking oh well i have to do the workshop so there's no way about it there's one person that's committed to coming so i have to go there and turn up and and be there for them if they commit to me i commit to them so that's my tip around um you know uh, uh quitting procrastination and if you um actually give yourself that 90 days to write your book What's very important with books is that you do run that pre-launch campaign, a pre-launch campaign where people are sort of going on the journey through which you are getting it all put together, you're sharing with them what you're doing and at the same time you're releasing some tips, some articles, some insights from the book, uh, maybe some YouTube videos 
and really getting them, um, you know, like building a hungry, hungry crowd who can't wait for this book to be, uh, to come out. I've sold so many of the Ultimate 48 Hour Author book already that um, that I know people are just always messaging me, when is it going to be out? When is it going to be out? Even some publicity people are waiting for it because I'm working at the moment with a publicist who's helped, helped me get a lot of articles, magazines, and we're going through this three-month um, uh, uh, campaign with him. And, yeah, he, he's got a few people waiting to actually post in the book too so that I can check it out and all that sort of stuff. So um, so that's a huge stuff. Procrastinating. Wendy's just said, how, whom do you get to check availability of book name? Can this be done before a book is written? Yeah, I've never checked availability of book names I uh, because I believe that there's many books that are actually the exact same name. And uh, my publisher has never actually said, no, you, I don't think it works like business names, Wendy. I think you can have um, uh, book names that, that are exactly the same because, um, um, yeah, I, I think you can. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never uh, I've never actually checked availability. Charlotte's just saying, yes, there are many books with the same name. Thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, and Darren says the difference is your name, which makes it unique. Oh, yep. Yeah. So the combination of your book name and your name is how it gets registered, which which is probably a very unique combination, I'd say, unless you had a very common name and two people exactly wrote the exact same book. So thanks, everyone, for adding that on. See, I, did, I had no idea, but I've obviously never looked that up. Maggie says, um, good point, didn't know that. See, we learned something tonight. Awesome. So let me tell you guys about the Ultimate 48 Hour Author Week. And I'm not going to tell you um, heaps. I'm just going to show you some pictures because I, I'm so proud of it and I love sharing. Um, but let me just, I've got one more one more question. Wendy's just said, what if you have in it a well-known business name, which is common term as well? Oh, it doesn't matter because a business name, it's not a registered business name. Business names are different to book names. They've got nothing to do with each other. So the book, Ultimate 40 and Our Author Weekend, is about getting a book completed in that short time frame. And as Karina mentioned before, you guys know my secret, most of you, is that we do get the book spoken out. So it takes a total of seven hours over the weekend to get it done. And the whole weekend is actually split up. We don't actually do it seven hours in a straight. We do an hour on the Friday, five hours on the Saturday, all at different stages and one hour on the Sunday mixed in with all the marketing and sales that needs to be delivered and educated as well as having a whole heap of fun um, at the weekend. So so the, this is just some pictures I wanted to share. This is Russell who uh, who is actually the bonus chap chapter at uh, the back of the Ultimate 48 Hour Author weekend so this is him recording his book and he uh completed it at the weekend and um and every um i'll tell you seven out of ten people completed it the other three got it done uh, a few days after they got home so so i was even uh, quite quite um impressed that that many people completed it that's us having dinner um and Stuart my husband does all the cooking and he was very uh had amazing feedback with that restaurant style meal so we hire luxury accommodation and in February we we're going to Rye and I'm not sure where he's booking us in April but I'll let you know um soon uh, Maggie's saying familiar faces yeah you know all these people um they're all authors now um, we had a photo shoot. We finished off the weekend on a very fun photo shoot. Um, Blaze, the publisher's husband, is actually a professional photographer and illustrator. So he came away um, at the last two hours of the weekend and took everyone's book shots, cover shots, and we didn't obviously make the book shots um, uh, really like th they all had something quirking with them or, or they stood for what the book was meant to be about. Um this is Sabrina chilling out by the pool and taking some notes in one of the hours and things like that. So um, there was a lot of downtime and there was a lot of bonding. <laughs> There's Stuart and Anthony having their pool um, in the evening, a few wines, and uh, we just couldn't stop talking. You couldn't send us to bed. So it's a whole lot of fun. But it's not about me, um, you know, of course I'd love people to attend the, uh, the the weekend. I'd love to help. My whole goal for 2014 is to uh, help 50 people publish their books and I'm on track. I am already helping about 16 
and and it's building obviously from there. But tonight, I actually want to offer you something different. Okay, and um, and I think this is very important when it comes to um, you know, knowing how your book is going to work with your business, and that is the ultimate sales final structural hour. So I actually want to help people out in um working out how each of their components of their business or how they can create those different income streams. Obviously, nothing's going to happen overnight, but to create and gain the understanding how their sales funnel will work, where if people will come in, how will they then get upgraded to different programs or, or services or products and how they can plan that out and then profit from it in the future. So that is what I would like to offer the, the team, the group here tonight. Um, and because I'm obviously on, on limited time, I can do seven. And um, and then on for those people, I'll also give them the Ultimate 48 Hour Author Book, which um, which will come out in Feb. So they'll get it probably late Feb, post it out to them. So that is a total value of 580 because my hourly rate is 550 and um, and the book is $30, obviously. And it is an investment of 147 tonight. I, if you want to also chat to me within that call about how your book, the skeleton of your book would look like, then you're more than welcome to do that. So to get yourself registered for the uh, Ultimate Sales Final Structure Hour, you've got to email me at book at ultimate48hourauthor.com.au and just ask for it. And then I'll send back some times that I'm available next week or the week after it will have to happen on a Wednesday or a Thursday because I am I have gotten very smart this year. I'm working with all my clients on Mondays and Tuesdays and I'm working on my business and um, obviously having conversations like this on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I'm very, um, uh, it's been working really well. I'm into my second week, so I must say it's been going really fantastic. Um, okay, so Maggie says, I do have to go five minutes, sorry, because I have another webinar. Uh, that's cool. Um, that's okay, Maggie. I'll send out the PowerPoint uh, presentation. So now, guys, with our last few minutes of our time, let me ask you, what was your one aha moment tonight and what action will you take as a result of um, having listened to tonight? And by all means, if you have now any burning questions of what you want to ask me, anything goes that's got to do with publishing a book because we believe that obviously from some of the comments tonight we've learned something new from the other people on the call so if you would do me the pleasure of of being just as interactive as you have been and share with me in the last five or so minutes and um and that would be fantastic so i can see what feedback um um you have and see what you've learned you're welcome maggie uh, maggie says uh setting a timeline and doing one page per day yeah, really setting, uh, chunking it right down um, to that. Um, Darren says, multiple streams of income going to put together the skeleton of the book. Perfect. Well done. Um, Emmy says, the 90-day goal for writing my first book was really cool. Making a 90 days plan for my book is my action point. Great. Uh, Jalinda says, blocking out the time. Wow. So that was the um, the the best bit a lot of people are obviously on the same um train of thought charlotte says the info of on how many words and planning the book is great it makes uh it sound a lot more doable it it is yeah it does uh pina said my aha was about disciplined um to set time aside and focus on writing my next step is to get this into my 90 day goals perfect um marie says how to sell my future books very motivated to keep writing I'm getting better at it yes and you do get better the more you write the more you write the better you get so remember that being comes with the doing so if you want to be a fantastic writer you do 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 and you become better I think someone said to me today um are you sure you weren't a copywriter in another uh life and I said no you should see some of my copy that I wrote in the early days but it just comes with practice Rosie says the, um, uh, that is helpful. Thank you. An 90 day plan makes it so achievable. Karen says my aha was the number of words uh, that constitute a book. My action is to take my already written book to you and your publisher. Cool. All right, Karen. Uh, Michelle says possibly better to publish in Australia rather than overseas. 
did not ask if um could publish CDs with company I've been speaking to. We'll look into your recommendations and follow uh, follow you more. Thank you. You're welcome, Michelle. Um, Jennifer says definitely blocking out the time, making the commitment to myself. Perfect. Uh, Karina says better insight into the how. Yep, great. Kay says I'm just uh, wetting my whistle for a future possibility. Thanks. You're welcome. Kim says the importance of pre-selling your book product, which will then make you commit. Great. Rob says structure, commitment, discipline, and scheduling the time. Great. Love it from Charlotte. And Marie says thank you for saying this. Um, and Marie says uh, you're very encouraging. Jelinda says I've been writing a presentation, was going to just do it dot, uh, point form, but it was flowing out of my head so well. I just started typing it in full. Now have the bones of three chapters of the book I've been writing and wanting to write so much clearer when you get it out of your head. Now I need to get a published stage. So 90 day plan, finalize in April, I think, and uh, commit. We'll talk about it in my presentation next week. Perfect. Love it. Um, uh, Karen says, yes, it was interesting about the overseas publishers and owning the rights. And Rob says, thanks, Nat. Well done. Awesome, guys. So with all your comments, we've clicked right on 8 o'clock. So it's been an absolute pleasure once again to um, to have you on the call. There's been many of you that have come through. So this is a very hot topic of discussion that we've got happening here. And um, and I'll keep bringing them. I'll generally do one one webinar a month um, and um, and see what else, what insights I can share. Emmy's just, thanks, Natasha, amazing value as always. Now committing myself, my book, and taking action. You're welcome, Karina. And um, and uh, uh, she's calculated about 12 chapters for 4,000 words. Yep, that's cool. Uh, Charlotte, you're welcome uh, that you've learned so much, and Pina and Andrew. All right, guys, go off. Have a wonderful evening. I'm going to go and catch up with my Verity and, um, and then I'll catch you on another call, I'm sure, very, very soon. Have an awesome night. Bye. See you, Kim.